Hello, my name is Attila Loshansi. And I'm Nathan Danielson. We are going to take you through our recent work published in Euron, Sublayer Specific Coding Dynamics During Spatial Navigation and Learning in Hippocampal Area CA1. One fundamental function of the mammalian brain is to learn and to remember. Our lab is interested in understanding how the neural circuitry in the mammalian hippocampus supports learning and episodic memory. A repository of acquired information of people, places, objects and events that together also constitute our autobiographical memories. Hippocampal episodic memory is thought to emerge from the trisynaptic circuit, proceeding from the dentate gyrus input node to area CA3 and finally to the CA1 output node. Principal excitatory cells throughout the trisynaptic circuitry are considered the primary carriers of memory-related information. Of course, the hippocampus is also critical for spatial navigation, and hippocampal memory and navigational functions are intimately related. Memories are thought to be encoded by sparse subset of principal excitatory cells, so that a unique ensemble represents each distinct memory. Implicit in this classical view is a framework of serial and random synaptic connections between large number of homogeneous populations of principal cells within and across each hippocampal subfield. And indeed, in the hippocampus we have this large number of densely interconnected principal cells. Therefore, this framework has been extremely successful to drive hippocampal network models of memory. However, one limitation of this framework is its inability to explain how a single circuit can reliably process and store memories acquired under dramatically different learning conditions. Similarly, the traditional conceptualization of principal neurons within each region as homogeneous and uniform coding units is untenable. Recent body of work has provided mounting evidence that hippocampal principal cells vary greatly in terms of their developmental origin, genetics, as well as their anatomical and physiological properties. It is therefore tempting to speculate that distinct subpopulations of principal neurons may encode, for example, different features of the environmental context and differentially contribute to hippocampal learning. Such functional gradients of pyramidal cells are increasingly appreciated along the dorsal, ventral and proximal distal axis of the hippocampus. However, it remained unknown whether this framework extends to the third, radial axis of the hippocampus. This radial subdivision among deep and superficial pyramidal cells has long been recognized. Superficial and deep CA1 pyramidal cells differ both genetically and neurochemically. For example, only superficial pyramidal cells express calcium binding protein called bindin. So together with graduate student Nathan Danielson in the lab, we asked the question whether these radially arranged subpopulations of CA1 pyramidal cells in a mouse dorsal hippocampus can differentially contribute to hippocampal navigation and learning. In order to monitor activity in both the deep and superficial sublayers of CA1 pyramidal cells, we chose to perform two photon calcium imaging in the mouse as the animals perform different tasks. Two photon imaging provides high resolution optical access to the hippocampus and allows us to easily separate the deep and superficial sublayers. In the movie on the right, we are moving through a high resolution structural stack acquired in vivo. In order to toggle the two photon imaging plane between Z coordinates, we couple the imaging objective to a piezoelectric crystal. The piezo is allowed to settle at each plane, resulting in flat images coplanar with the pyramidal layer. We acquired images sequentially at a rate of 7 Hz. This allowed us to monitor fluorescence in both sublayers near simultaneously. This movie shows the motion corrected signals from an example imaging session as the mouse ran for water rewards in a multisensory context. The traces below reflect calcium activity in two example deep and superficial CA1 PCs. Significant calcium events are indicated in color. By plotting the transients as a function of the animal's position on the treadmill, we can estimate the spatial rate map for each cell. We expose the animals to novel contexts A and B following an ABB paradigm. In order to assess the population level response to the contextual manipulation, we compared the remapping observed in the AB condition with that of the BB condition. To measure remapping, we relied on a population level metric, the population vector correlation, as well as a single cell metric, the tuning curve correlation. Here we've shown the summary data from the population vector correlation analysis. Each circle on the left represents a single field of view. Both sublayers remapped similarly in the AB condition, but superficial maps were significantly more stable in the BB condition than deep. 
This resulted in a greater difference in stability between conditions for superficial CA1 PCs. We next sought to examine sublayer dynamics during a different behavioral state, goal-oriented learning. For this, we adapted a freely moving reward learning paradigm, the cheese board maze, to our imaging preparation. Mice were first trained to run and lick for randomly delivered water rewards. Then during the experiment, the reward zone was fixed along the belt, and the mice learned the location of the reward zone over the course of three days. We then moved the reward zone to a new location on the belt and repeated the experiment. By the end of learning, the mice licked specifically in the reward zone, and this allowed us to use the spatial specificity of the licking as a measure of learning. We first compared the session-to-session -session stability of deep and superficial place maps during random foraging and goal-oriented learning. We found that the superficial maps were similarly stable during both behaviors, while deep maps were considerably more stable during goal-oriented learning than they were during random foraging. Given the salient nature of the reward zone, we next compared place coding near versus away from the reward. Place fields in both sublayers were narrower near the reward zone, but the magnitude of the in versus out difference was more pronounced in the deep sublayer. Additionally, deep place cells firing near the reward were more stable than those away from it, whereas the superficial layer did not demonstrate this relationship. Together with the previous findings, these results suggest that the neuromodulatory systems involving attention or reward might differentially modulate the sublayers. Representation of reward has been linked to task performance on the freely moving cheeseboard task, so we asked whether the same dynamics were present in our task and whether the relationship between remapping and performance was similar between the sublayers. We quantified task performance, P, as the fraction of licks occurring in the reward zone, and D was taken as the mean distance from each place field to the reward. By the end of learning, we found an increased representation of the reward zone by cells in both sublayers. In comparing the relationship between D and P between the sublayers, however, we found that deep reward representation was significantly more predictive of performance than was superficial reward representation. These scatters estimate the change in performance attributable to each sublayer, and the shuffle analysis shows that the remapping in the deep sublayer was more tightly linked to performance than superficial. In summary, our results indicate that superficial CA1 pyramidal cells provide a more stable map of an environment, while deep CA1 pyramidal cells provide a more flexible representation that is shaped by learning about salient features in the environment. Furthermore, by demonstrating cellular and population level differences in activity between deep and superficial CA1 pyramidal cells, our work provides further insight into the cellular complexity and functional architecture supporting spatial processing and learning in the hippocampus.